Well, this morning's parable is one of those uh, heavy ones that we come to from the Lord. Last week we talked about parables and uh, the meaning of parables and how the parable of the sower is a what we call a meta parable. It's, it's, it instructs us about all the other parables that come afterward. And we see today how that instruction can help us understand this parable a little bit as well. So first of all, we have to understand who the Lord is speaking to here in this parable about Lazarus and the rich man who is not named, as you notice. So first we know that Jesus spoke to a variety of people. We know that Israel and Jerusalem at the time and the whole city, uh, the whole country of Israel was very cosmopolitan. There were a lot of Greeks. There were a, a lot of uh, Africans. Um, there were a lot from Persia, all over the place. It was the center of the known world. You've got to understand that. We don't think about that. We think that, you know, Crossingville is the center of the world, right? You know? Well, maybe not Crossingville, but at least Pittsburgh, right? Or, or something big city, right? Maybe we might say Washington, D.C., right? Or New York City, right? And in the day, that was what it was like. It was like a New York City. Okay. Everybody from all over the place was there. So when Jesus spoke to these crowds of people that he would speak to, he would speak, as we said, in parables so that those who do understand will be able to get it. And those who don't, because they're not prepared, remember? That's what we talked about, that the meta parable and why the Lord teaches the way he does about the parable of the sower. And we can see some instruction about it today in our epistle reading as well. But that God sows the seeds in the hearts of mankind. What soil it is depends on the person. So today we see that really this parable is not so much about Lazarus as it is about the rich man and the state of his heart, the soil of his heart. And then this also instructs us, too, about how we're going to approach God and how we need to think through the way in which we um, come to God. You know, we have to be careful. We might say, well, Father, this is back in the day. This wasn't for us, right? Jews and Gentiles, you know, we don't qualify for that. Well, we do. <laughs> we are considered Gentiles. But ultimately, he's speaking... To the Jewish people as well. He's not even speaking to the Gentiles. Lazarus represents the Gentiles. But the rich man, he represents the Jews. They're the people who had the deposit of faith given to them through, who is mentioned in this parable? Abraham, right? And so I have a, a very nice article in the bulletin today about Abraham, and if you're um, if you're able to, um, you can go and, and read this online, or, or you can have it in your bulletin here. But um, you can find this on the OCA website, um, and it is um, on, on the Rainbow series, Father Tom Hopko. But a wonderful explanation of really what Abraham means and how important Abraham is to our faith, even today. This is why in the parable, the Lord has the rich man and Lazarus conversing with Abraham, the first real, uh, you might say, revelator, the one who was given the revelation, right, of who God is. You remember the story of the three angels that visited Abraham? They visited him, and he knew immediately that this was God visiting him. It was a revelation of God to Abraham that, in instructing Abraham, that he would be the father of many nations. When I was a young boy, we sang a song called Father Abraham. Do you remember that song, anybody? Father Abraham had many sons, and many sons had Father Abraham. That was on the song, and I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just, I forget the rest of it. <laughs> <laughs> but 
wonderful song because really we are all inheritors of Abraham and his great faith. Along the way, there had to be a preparation to bring Jesus into the world, but Abraham was the way. And so that's why the Lord uses Abraham in this parable to explain to the people how important their ancient faith was, which guess what? They had forgotten. Was not the faith of the Jews to care for the poor, to love those around them? All the commandments, brothers and sisters, that we have from the Lord are the same commandments that they have. If you read the Psalter, if you read Deuteronomy, you'll see that the Lord just taught from the Old Testament. Remember the man who came and said, what's the greatest commandment? He said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Jesus didn't just invent that. That was already written in Deuteronomy. Loving your neighbor was a natural thing. People understood this already. The problem is they didn't follow it with their lives. They said it with their mouths. They spoke it out. Yes, you've got to love God with your whole mind and your whole strength. Love your neighbor as yourself as they kick the beggar as they walk by. <clears throat> this was their attitude, and this parable is a prominent example of that. Now, maybe it's a little extreme, but the point being, you can't forget the one who is in need. And in the Jews' case, it was the whole Gentile race. They basically called the Gentiles scum. They didn't like them. And still to this day, the Jews don't like it. They call them the Goyim today. We're called the Goyim. You know, we're a subclass of people. That's how elitist they are. That's how elitist the Pharisees were. This is why Jesus was speaking so directly against them. And the reason why, part of the reason why, he was taken to the cross. Because he was speaking out against their hypocrisy. Speaking out against not caring for the poor. Now, the thing about the rich man in this particular story, and St. Gregory the Great has some great commentary on, uh, on this whole uh, parable, if you want to look at it a little closer. But um, the parable itself, the rich man represents the Jews and their rejection of God, and even as you see at the end of the parable, their rejection of Christ himself. Where the rich man says, oh, just send back, you know, somebody to, to let them know, let my sons know. And, and that way, you know, they won't do the same thing I did. And be mean and be angry and be upset and constantly be living the high life with forgetting the one who's right at your doorstep. And so, essentially, that's what happens. The Lord teaches the Jews around that without this heart of compassion without this real living out of the faith, not just speaking it but living it out you would be condemned Our, when you go out today I want you to just look at the icon before you go out the icon of the last judgment this was really like Abraham's story he was on the one side looking over and could see how Lazarus was now Lazarus had all terrible life when he was on earth, but when he went to heaven, he received great joy. The opposite was true for the rich man. He had everything he needed here on earth, but he didn't make it to heaven. And really, ultimately, we could say that he didn't want to be in heaven. He chose to be where he was. And this is our understanding of heaven and hell, you know. You choose to be with God, or you don't want to be with God. And if you don't want to be with God, then you're going to be in the pains of hell. Brothers and sisters, this is a wake-up call to us. To face our words, make our words meet our actions, right? And to love all those around us without condition. Lazarus was poor. But if that rich man would have just simply flipped him a coin as he walked by every day or every other day or even once a week, flipped him a, a shekel, this parable would not have happened. But he didn't even know the rich man was there. 
There's a story of a great saint that I can't remember the names, but I, I remember the story. A um, man who went off and left his parents and came back and was a beggar at his parents' house in a little shack in front of their house, and they didn't know it was him until many years later. I uh, remember that story. It reminds me of that today. Look around you and see those around you. Try to minister as best you can to those around you. As you've heard me say before, start with your family. Start with those you know the best. A lot of times, those are the ones who get neglected because we forget, because we see them all the time. But look to your neighbor. Have concern for those around you. Thank God, um, yesterday, we were able to go down to the uh, Voodoo Brewery Market and have our uh, booth there. And we had a booth set up with uh, some icons and some information about the church and we gave out free cider. And we had some wonderful conversations with people. As rainy and as a dreary day as it was, uh, really had some wonderful conversations with people who stopped in just to see what we're about and us to just give a word of encouragement to people. And I tell you what, I was thinking about it because it was not a lot of people, but we felt good about those who came. But as I was walking around, I thought, you know, it's a blessing just for someone to walk by and turn their head. They didn't even stop in, but just looked at what we had for their eyes to see Christ. We have a big icon of Christ. Some of them may have never seen an icon of Christ. And they could walk by. And that icon of Christ would have so much power they could change them. I believe that. And honestly, I think that that's how we have to approach our life. You're an image of God. You shine forth the image of God in your face, in your life, in your heart, in your very being. Be that light to the people around you. Don't neglect those that you see all the time. Even just a word of encouragement. You don't have to solve anybody's financial problems or, you know, change some other big significant thing in their life. But just shine the light of Christ by giving a word of encouragement. And you'll be surprised how this can transform you and it can transform those around you. It doesn't take much. Like I said, if the rich man would have just did something simple, it would have transformed him. Let us be transformed. And let's let this parable help us to see that the seed that is planted in us is the love of God. And he wants you to share that with others as well. And to grow that love in you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory to Jesus Christ. Praise Praise forever. Forever.